Hey folks, welcome to TypeSafe GraphQL with TypeScript. My name's Aaron Powell and I'm a Principal Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. Over the last 15 or so years, I've been doing web development, starting with languages like Classic ASP and PHP, through to .NET, compiled languages on the server, and then eventually to JavaScript on the server and JavaScript in the client. In my time that I've been building web applications, I've seen all sorts of different ways we can do data access whether it's just normal page refreshes and getting more data on request, to custom built APIs to serve out, you know, kind of like uh, ajax -y sort of endpoints uh, for an application, through to really strict REST implementations. But today I wanna to talk about specifically GraphQL, which is another way which we can do data access. If you wanna get in touch with me after the session, you'll find all my details here on the slides. And uh, do feel free to reach out if you've got any questions that I don't get a chance to cover off in the Q&A. Um, I'll do my best to answer them uh, after the session, if I, uh, or at least help you along the way of finding the answers if I don't know them myself. But that's enough about me. You're here not to learn about me and my background, my history. You're here to learn about GraphQL and TypeScript and how we can work with those together. But before we get into looking at how we can build an application, I want to talk a bit about what GraphQL is and why it's interesting. GraphQL was originally created by Facebook as a query language for doing client and server interactions. It's not how you implement a server or it's not a client implementation, but it's more a specification of how those two can talk to each other. So you still build a server implementation, whether it's in JavaScript, .NET, Node, Python, etc. We can build whatever we need for the kinds of applications we're building. Um, and then we can build a client that's also gonna be able to talk over the same protocol, generate the kinds of queries that is expected and send them to the server. So what makes GraphQL different to REST? Because REST is the most common way that people have built APIs, in, uh, in, at least in the past. Well, the main difference is that REST is very centered around the way the server visualizes its data and wants to expose that out. Let's say we're building a trivia application. And inside of that, we're gonna have three primary model types. We've got our game, we've got players, and we've got questions. Now in a REST scenario, at least in a very strict approach to doing REST, probably have a game endpoint, so slash API slash game, and then from that we can get back a, an API, a game based off its ID, and then from that we would have an array of IDs of questions and players that we then have to follow in through and then do additional requests to get all that information. Now this might be a little bit over uh, complex for some scenarios where you are fetching data, but it's also going to be ideal for others. Um, I'm not here to tell you that you should be using GraphQL or REST in, uh, for your kind of applications. You've got to work out that one on yourself, on your own, depending on the kinds of applications you're building. GraphQL, though, is a kind of the flipped model for compared to REST. So where REST is all about what the server defines how you do your data access, GraphQL is more about how the client wants to be able to get data. You still expose the data models that your server has available to it, but it is up to the client to determine how it wants to query for that data, and then to build out the queries that are gonna be right for the particular request that it needs to be doing and for the data it needs at that point in time. Now this can avoid scenarios where you're overfetching data, getting data that you don't actually need at that point in time because you're trying to say, just display the, the high scoreboard at the end of a trivia game. Well, maybe you don't need all of the questions. Uh, but you unfortunately might have to get those if the, uh, depending on how the REST model is set up. In GraphQL, you can be a lot more selective about that and only get the data that you need. But as I said, I'm not here to tell you exactly when to use REST versus GraphQL. I'm here to look at the specific scenarios of how we can do type safety with GraphQL. So why is type safety with GraphQL uh, a topic of conversation? Well, with the GraphQL schema that we can build out, it's gonna be type safe. We define strongly typed data models and the fields that are available with inside of those data models. We then define strongly typed queries and mutations, so how we can get data and how we can change data that are available with inside of our, uh, our server and for our clients to communicate on. So having this type information originally to start with is a good building block for building a type safe application. But with JavaScript, well, we can lose a lot of that type safety anyway, because JavaScript is an inherently untyped language. That's where TypeScript can come to play. So what are we gonna be building today? Well, we're going to be building an application with two components. We're going to start with a server. And for that server, I'm going to be using the Apollo GraphQL framework. So this is a server implementation of GraphQL that you can run in a variety of different manners, whether it's on a web server platform like Express or Coa, or you can run it in a serverless model, which I'm going to be using Azure Functions to do. 
Um, I just like the serverless model, but it's the same approach to whether you're doing a, a servered or a serverless model or uh, whether you're using any of the different um, underlying providers that Apollo supports. And then from a client standpoint, well, we're gonna need a client that's gonna to connect to that and I'm gonna be building a React-based web application. Now the stuff that I'm covering off here isn't exclusively supported by React. It could be applied to any of the other JavaScript frameworks you might be using, whether it's Felt, Angular, Vue, etc. Um, I just prefer React because it's the one that I've uh, had the most experience with and it's kind of my, my go-to approach with doing web applications. But like I said, it's entirely up to you um, how you wanna do the client and the stuff I will be showing you is applicable to pretty much every JavaScript framework. But as I said, we wanna do end-to-end -end type safety. So that's where TypeScript's gonna come into play. I'm gonna be using TypeScript as a way to model out our backend and also do strongly typed front ends. But what I want is the type information I have in my GraphQL schema available on both client and server. So they are literally talking the same language. So let's jump out of the slides and have a look at how we can do that with a bit of a demo. I'm gonna go through a subset of a larger workshop that I've got Share the link to that at the end if you're interested. And we're going to be building out a couple of different pieces that look at the specific type safe aspects of building a GraphQL server. So here we are in VS Code and it's time to get started. I said, this is a, a, a workshop where I've already got some of the stuff set up and here is a GraphQL schema that I've predefined. Now, as we can see, I've got a number of types that are available. I have a question type, a game, uh, that game has questions available to it. So we've got types that reference other types that we have. I have uh, some enums. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we'll see that we have a query. So this is the entry point when someone is doing a request against a GraphQL uh, server. And these are the things that you're able to do against it. You're able to get back a game by its ID. You're able to get back all the games in the system. And you're able to get back uh, a player's results for a particular game. So their answers, so we can work out how many they got correct and versus how many they got incorrect. What we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to implement some resolvers that work with these. So resolvers are functions that handle the queries or handle the GraphQL objects as they're being parsed through. So let's pop up into another file called resolvers.ts. I'm gonna put the schema on the side here. So inside of resolvers, I'm gonna start building out those queries that I've got here on the side and uh, functions that handle those. So in my resolver, I have a query, which is a type name that matches the same type that I had inside of my schema. And let's start with the easiest one, which is game. So, sorry, games, because we just want to get all of the games. And well, I need to return something, but this is just an object that I've created. It doesn't understand any type information. It's got no correlation to the type information that we have with inside of our schema. But because I've worked with Apollo before, I know that the first argument is going to be the uh, parent of this in the object graph, but this is a root entry point for a GraphQL schema. So I don't have a parent at this point. Um, any arguments that could be provided to this operation. I don't have any arguments at this point in time because games doesn't take any arguments. And then finally, I have a context where I can provide something or I can get access to like services that have been injected and other stuff that are available for the lifetime of this request. Uh, one of those things is data sources and that's gonna give me access to my underlying database. Now I know that that's there because I've implemented this application and I've, I've, I know the code base, so I know what's there, um, but I don't have any type information. I don't know that if I do data sources that there are any fields off this I could access. Having worked on this uh, code base, I know that I can do dot .game, which is a property available there, and I can get games off that. And I know that's gonna return something that can be handled by GraphQL. Similarly, if I want to implement the games, uh, the, the, the games resolver, uh, so I do game, and then again, we don't have a parent. I know that the second argument will have uh, objects, uh, an object which is the arguments that are provided by um, the query, and I can decompose this with the ID. And finally, I can get data sources again. And I know that I can return data sources, game, got get game, and provide it with the ID. But again, I only know this information because I built the code base myself. If we have a look at any of this, it's all just untyped. Now I have my any's everywhere, and well, now TypeScript really isn't giving me any value. So I need to work out how can we get some of that schema value, uh, schema typed information here to make TypeScript giving us some actual value, or I just throw away TypeScript. Uh, those are kind of the two endpoints that I've got here. But we'll jump through to a slightly more completed version of the application and have a look at that. Let's open up the resolvers again, and we'll see that uh, I've gone through and well, I've got the same resolvers for game and games. Uh, I also have my player results. So this is how I can get back the uh, results that a player has uh, submitted, so their, their answers. 
Uh, we'll see that again, we're decomposing a couple of um, fields out of there. And without having the schema side by side, do I know that it's game ID and player ID? I mean, I'm going to assume they are because that's what I, I wrote previously in, uh, in the demo before I started. Um, but yeah, like if you didn't have that scheme like, immediately available, it's, it's a little bit opaque. We don't know what's there. Well, so this is an async function. So we're awaiting on the get game uh, method on our game data source. But did we realize that that was something that returned a promise um, by looking at it previously? No, we didn't. We know that because we know this code base and we can dig through it. So this is where we want to start looking at how we can get that type safe information. I'm going to install a new package. Whoop, install, there it is. I uh, called GraphQL code gen slash CLI. So GraphQL code gen is a series of packages for generating code from GraphQL. Uh, and this is a command line tool that will then allow me to generate out uh, the, um, the TypeScript definitions that I need. So let's run npx. Uh, GraphQL code gen in it. And it's going to prompt us uh, through a bit of a wizard on what we want. We want to build a backend or API server. Uh, the schema is at slash GraphQL slash schema dot GraphQL. GraphQL. There we go. Uh, we want to generate the TypeScript model definitions. And we also want to generate the TypeScript resolver definitions so we can strongly type our resolvers. Uh, we want to output this to say graph uh, dot slash graph ql slash generated.ts. Uh, we generate an introspection file, so that's just some debugging information. We'll leave the uh, default YAML file name, and we're going to add a npm run script called gen. That will be so that we can just run the code generator uh, without having to do npx every single time. Uh, so this is now going to go ahead and it's going to create us our YAML file for our config. It's going to then uh, update our package JSON with that new run script and with some additional dependencies that we're going to need, and basically get our environment ready so that we can go ahead and build our GraphQL, um, our strongly typed information from our GraphQL schema file. All right, so if we do npm oh, npm run gen, we'll see that that's gone ahead and done it. Oh, and it looks like I have got an error in something that I've added, and I forgot to install my dependencies. Oops, npm install. Uh, because <laughs> it added some new things to my package JSON, and I completely forgot to in, uh, do an npm install to make sure that they were installed as well. So that's just a you know, the, the joys of live demo is you've got to remember all the steps that you meant to run. npm run gen, we'll do that again. Take two. <laughs> and excellent, that's worked successfully. Let's close off our terminal. Have a look, and here is our new generated file. So this has got a whole bunch of TypeScript type definitions. We'll see that we've got question here. And if we were to pop open our schema on the side, go back to generated, we'll see that that's got the same fields. We have an ID, which is an ID type, which is using the scalar type of ID. We'll see that we've got our, um, our uh, question, correct answer, and answers, which are strings or arrays of strings. We'll see that a bit further down, we have game, which has uh, scalar types, and then it's got um, some like some optional types. So the game state is an optional value, or we've got arrays, which have got player and question, so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea of where I'm going here. One-to-one -one mapping between what our schema had. But what that does mean is that I can come into my resolver function uh, file here, and then I can say that I want to strongly type this as resolvers, resolvers, uh, resolvers. There we go. And that's going to come from API uh, GraphQL generated. So this will import that in. And now we'll see that, say, the ID is strongly typed as string. Fantastic, because we know that that is off our schema coming in as a string ID. We know that that's correct. Excellent. So we can uh, we know that that's there. We know that the same with player ID is going to be all correct. Um, we know that the player result needs to return a particular type and so on and so forth. So we're getting some of that type safe information. We still don't know what our data source is though, which is a little bit of a problem because, well, I mean, is it game or is it games? I, I'd have to dig through my own code base to remember. Um, you know, it, it's the kind of thing that you don't hit to runtime. But let's just do an npm start, kick off our API and have a look at what's actually up and running. Now we'll give this a moment. It's going to compile our TypeScript, uh, and there we go. That's all up and running. Uh, we'll start our local web server. Here we go. Here's our GraphQL endpoint. And we'll zoom that in once it loads. Excellent. Uh, this will load up the GraphQL playground. 
and we'll see that excellent we can perform a query and here's a query that i've uh, previously done so it's just going to dump out all of the games the state of the game its id and uh, the questions that were asked so if you hit run on this um it turns out that we get another error and you'd think that even if you were doing a pre-recorded talk you wouldn't have uh, runtime errors and stuff like that you should get, get those in anything uh, but no this is actually an error that i expect what it's saying is it can't return null from a non-null field question dot correct answer well that's because what we're doing is well actually let's just jump back to vs code and we'll have a look at that close off our terminal and we'll see that in our schema if we go up to the top we have correct answer but if we were to go through to data slash type so this is the definition of our our database so this is our databases um the way our database visualizes types well we'll see that we actually store correct underscore answer not correct answer um, as pascal case and similarly we have incorrect answers not answers in array so the way that the schema is exposing stuff doesn't 100 percent map to what our database is because we don't want to expose our database directly and we are doing a bit of translation so we need to do something that tells us well that these two models need to map back and forth between each other as well something that we're currently not doing and for that we can add some model mapping inside of our code gen file so let's open up our code gen yaml and we're going to add some model mappers actually we'll jump across and i'll show this in a completed version rather than uh rather than potentially run, doing some more runtime errors we're running out of time for today so let's try and get things working as much as we can <laughs> let's come into api go generate yaml and if we have a look here i've generated uh, I've, I've configured my code generator so it's got some context come back to that in a moment but most importantly we have mappers this mapper is saying when you find a graphql type of question we're going to use our graph uh, question model type which is defined in typescript if we do npm run gen here oh, uh, npm oh, i am in the wrong folder where are we going? where are we going we are going to uh completed api there we go and npm run gen so we'll just generate out our uh typescript file excellent that'll be ready in just a minute there we go and if we have a look at graphql generated now we have a bit of additional information that's mapping between our uh, our questions and our players because what it's doing is it's detecting that whenever it finds a question it's going to return a question model so how does this work with inside of our resolver well now our resolver function is going to return a type of well, this um this is returning a game model which is expected here or player results is going to return a different kind of model and we're then going to map those a bit further down with our uh, our object mappers with inside of our resolver so here it's saying if you find a question so this is a type that you need to return for graphql we're going to receive a question model so that's its parent this time and then from that we're going to generate a new thing which is going to return an array of strings so we're going to take the incorrect answers, the correct answer, and then return that out. Similarly with uh, correct answer, we're just going to return the correct underscore answer field from the question model. So now if I change my underlying data structure, so inside of my database, it's only called correct answer. I change it to correct answer with, you know, with a Pascal case. Well, then this will start being a compilation error because this field no longer exists. And then I know that I can remove this bit of code because I no longer need to do that custom mapping. So this type end-to-end -end type safety is going all the way from our underlying database through to what our schema has defined. And then we're having our resolver, the thing that works to kind of merge those two together, understanding that type safety. The other thing that I'm doing here is, well, I want my client application, my React application to also work with this type information. So if I come down into my TypeScript application, I have, say, a page where we're going to create a new game. So this is going to need to perform a mutation against our GraphQL server. So it's going to need to create a new game. So what I've done is I've created a reusable uh, little bit of GraphQL, um, a little GraphQL query that's reusable called create game. That is just the mutation 
create game, and this is what it's gonna do, and it's gonna return me the game ID. I don't need all the other fields, I don't need the questions at this point in time, because I only need the ID to go through to the next screen. Inside of my config YAML file, for so my code gen um, YAML file for uh, GraphQL code generator, I've also said that I've got to generate a TSX file, which is going to contain some React hooks, and it's going to use the TypeScript um, uh, plugin, uh, is a TypeScript operations plugin. So it's going to load these files, uh, these operation files here. So these are those pre-written uh, queries and mutations, and then it's going to generate me a typed document node. So this is going to, uh, so this could generate me specific React uh, hooks if I wanted them as React hooks or hierarchical components and things like that. But I've told it um, that I'm not going to use those plugins at this point in time. Instead, I'm just going to return typed document nodes. So these document nodes can be loaded by anything that's going to be consuming GraphQL, uh, whether it's um, React or Angular or Svelte, etc. Um, I'm just, as like I said, so happen to be doing this with React. So this create doc game document is the thing that's been code generated for me. I can then pass this to a used mutation, which is from the Apollo client for uh, GraphQL. So this is a custom React hook that Apollo has given us. Um, I also have just some state, some normal like um, React state that's available to me as well that I'm putting some type information in, uh, that I'm putting some objects in. And these I'm combining together to create a strongly typed version of um, a query against our GraphQL server. So I have my create game operation that's here that when executed, so depending on when an effect is triggered, so someone has clicked the button to actually create the game, it's going to call that hook, which is going to perform some operations. Eventually we'll get back some data and that data is going to have, if we have a look at that getting unpacked, here we go, down here on line 21, that gets unpacked. We're not loading and we've called and there wasn't an error and we received the uh, create game response. Then I know that I have, an ID field here, which is going to be a string, which is the value that I get back from performing that mutation against my GraphQL server. So this might seem kind of a lot of parts that are all connected together, but it all comes down to relying on the code that I'm generating out of here, looking at a schema that I've got here, combining that with some pre-written commands and operations that I've got with inside of my GraphQL application. So the client has some pre-written operations, working with a schema that I've got elsewhere, and we're using the types end-to-end -end across those so that I can generate out type safe resolvers. So these are the resolvers that are going to be returning custom model mappers so that I can map the underlying data stru structures of my database through to the types that my schema says are available to the clients and eventually have a client that is capable of using these operations, generating some typed information of them, and then when, say, a mutation is called, I get the data back, and I get that data back in a typed way that I can have that field available to me, and I know what it is, and I can, um, I can perform the correct step through in my application to get to the next point. So I know that that was a real lot of information that we covered in a very short period of time, but I hope it gives you an idea of how you can do type safe end-to-end -end GraphQL applications. We looked at a subset of a workshop that I've got. Um, uh, there's about eight different modules in that workshop that cover off how to build a GraphQL application with TypeScript, um, all the way from uh, the first setting up of the server through to how we do that end-to-end uh, -end type safety with our React application talking through to the GraphQL server backend. Um, so uh, the link's there on the slide if you wanna go check that out and have a bit more of a poke around in the code that uh, was used inside of this demo. The way that I approach this was using GraphQL code generator. Um, I like to go schema first in the way that I build out my TypeScript, um, uh, sorry, my, my GraphQL servers. So I tend to generate a GraphQL schema file and then want to export that as type information. But there are other ways if you wanted to do more of, um, I use the TypeScript objects that you're creating, so like classes and things like that, and then use that to generate a GraphQL schema from it. So kind of go the other way. or um, And uh, yeah, so there's, there are projects out there that will do that. Um, uh, that uh, I haven't played around with much, um, but yeah, if you prefer to do more of a, um, a code first approach rather than a schema first approach, uh, you can definitely tackle it in that regards. 
Um, if you're wanting to learn a bit more about how you can run GraphQL on Azure, um, there's a link to a blog series that I've been writing that looks at all the different aspects of how we can uh, do things like, well, actually taking this workshop that I've got here, um, how you can run that kind of a code base inside of Azure, uh, as well as how you can run things um, on a servered infrastructure rather than a serverless approach. But that's all that I had time for today and all I wanted to cover off. Thank you for uh, sticking around for the session. Thank you for uh, letting me present some of my um, learnings that I've had when building strongly typed GraphQL uh, applications. Um, I hope this has been interesting. I hope you've learned something and I hope that it shows you that it is definitely possible to use the type of information we've got in GraphQL with a, um, a server and a client all together so we can do end-to-end -end type safety. Bye for now.